Welcome everyone, Mrs. Terubini here with another tutorial on adding and subtracting fractions. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to add and subtract fractions with like and unlike denominators, as well as add and subtract mixed numbers with like and unlike denominators. What you can look forward to is a tutorial on adding and subtracting fractions from whole numbers as well as I'll do another tutorial on solving fraction wood problems. Let's begin. We're going to add and subtract with like denominators. What do I mean by like denominators? We're going to add and subtract with common denominators. Now the rule of thumb is this, when we are adding or subtracting fractions, we must ensure that we have common denominators. And if we don't have common denominators, then we would have to find the LCM. Okay, now to, if you don't know how to find the LCM, you can look at our tutorial on LCM as well. Let's begin 13 over 30 plus 11 over 30. And we can see that we have common denominators. All denominators are the same. So what we need to do is simply add our numerators and put the answer over our denominator. So 13 plus 30 is 24. 13 plus 11, sorry, is 24 over 30. Now, the other thing to note, we must always give our answer in its lowest form okay if you don't know how to put a fraction in its lowest form then you need to look at our tutorial on reducing fractions okay okay so 24 over 30 what is the highest common factor what is the highest number could i use to reduce the number 24 and 30 without a remainder the highest number that i can use is six because six can go into 24 how many times and six can go into 30 how many times six can go into 24 four times and six can go into 30 five times all right, so here we have a fraction in its reduced form. It's a proper fraction, 4 over 5. Next, 23 over 100 plus 54 over 100. As we can see, we have common denominators. So we are simply going to add our numerators. 23 plus 54 is going to give us 77 over 100. Can we reduce 77 over 100? Is there a number that can go into 77 without a remainder as well as 100? No, there isn't. There isn't a whole number that can do that. 7 can go into 77 11 times, but could 7 go into 100 without a remainder? No. 7 could go in 10, can go into 100 10 times. But could 10 go into 77 without a remainder? No. So 77 over 100 is a proper fraction, and this is our answer. This fraction cannot be reduced any further. Our next example is 19 over 25. Take away 11 over 25. As we can see here, we have common denominators. So we simply subtract our numerators. 19 take away 11 is going to give us 8 over 25. Can this fraction be reduced any further? There is no number that can go into 8 and 25 without a remainder. Next example, we have 14 over 15 plus 9 over 15. And the first thing you're looking for is to see if you have common denominators. Yes, we do. So all we have to do is add our numerators. We have 14 plus 9 and that's going to give us 23 over 15. Question to ask yourself, could this fraction be reduced any further? Is there any number that can go into 23 and 15 without a remainder? No. As we can see here, we also have an improper fraction. Okay, and there's also a tutorial on that, teaching you how to convert an 
improper fraction to a mixed number. So because this is an improper fraction, we can reduce this fraction by dividing by our denominator. Okay, so we're going to say 15 into 15, 1. And how many times could 15 go into 23? 15 can go into 23 one time with a remainder of 8 over 15. So as we can see here, this improper fraction, we reduced it by converting it to a mixed number. Let's look at this number here. Could 8 over 15 be reduced any further? No, there isn't a number that can go into 8 and go into 15 without a remainder. So 1 and 8 or over 15 is our answer. Now we are going to add and subtract with unlike denominators. Okay? And what do we do when we don't have common denominators? When we don't have like den denominators, we must find the LCM, the lowest common multiple. And again, look at our tutorial on LCM if you don't know how to find the LCM. What is the LCM of 12 and 11? Could 12 go into 11? No. So therefore, I can. I'm not supposed to see 11 as our LCM. Okay? Could 11 go into 12 without a remainder? No. So I can't, I'm not supposed to see 12 nor 11 here. The number that comes here must be a number that 12 can go into and that 11 can go into. And not just any number, but the lowest number that 12 can go into and that 11 can go into. All right? So the LCM of 12 and 11 is, I'm going to my working column, I'm writing 12 and 11. Okay, what can go into 12? 6, 6 can go into 12 how many times? 2 times, could 6 go into 11 without a remainder? Nope, so we're going to bring 11 here. What number are we going to use next? 2, 2 into 2 is 1, and this is what we want to get to, 1, okay? Could 2 go into 11 without a remainder? Nope, so we bring it down. What can go into 11 without a remainder? 11, okay? Bring down this one and 11 can go into 11 one time. Okay, to get the LCM, I multiply the numbers that I have on the outside. 6 twos are 12, and 12 by 11 is 132. Now, if you don't do if you don't know that, what are you supposed to do? Yes, go to your working column. Some questions will have multiple steps that shouldn't scare you because you know how to multiply. 12 multiplied by 11 is, when I'm multiplying by a two-digit number, by a, when I'm multiplying a two-digit number by a two-digit number, the first thing I do is put my zero. One times two is two, one times one is one. And then one times two is two, I'm multiplying by this number now. And then this one times this one is one. Okay, and now we're going to add. Zero plus two is two, two plus one is three, 1 plus 0 is 1. So the answer is 132. So the LCM of 12 and 11 is 132. Now hint. 12 cannot go into 11 without a remainder. And 11 cannot go into 12 without a remainder. So to find the LCM of 12 and 11, we can simply multiply 12 by 11. Now if we knew that, we might have skipped this step. I'm not saying that this step is not important, huh? We might have skipped this step and just get to our working column and multiply 12 by 11 and get 132. Okay, moving on. What do I do next after finding the LCM? I have to divide and then multiply my answer to the numerator. Now, drawing these lines and division sign and multiplication sign can help you especially if this is the first time you're doing this, okay? So I'm going to divide, I'm going to say 12 into 132. What am I asking you? How many times could 12 go into 132? 12 can go into 132 11 times. And I know this because I multiply 12 by 11. 
12 by 11 is 132. Okay, so 12 can go into 132 11 times. Now, if you don't understand what I just said, go to your working column and let's divide 12 into 132. Could 12 go into 1? No, 0. Could 12 go into 13? Yes. How many times? One time. 12 by 1 is 12. I subtract. Okay. 3 take away 2 is 1. And 1 take away 1 is 0. So I'm remaining here with a 1. Let me get my marker. So 1 is here. 1 take away 1 is 0. And now I'm going to bring down my 2. So I now have what? What's my new number? 12. Good. So 12 can go into 12. How many times? 1 time. All right. My 1 on top. After dividing, I'm going to multiply. 12 ones are 12. Now this line that I have here is not necessary. So I'm going to write my 12 then i'm going to subtract 12 ones are 12 i'm going to subtract 2 take away 2 is 0 1 take away 1 is 0 okay so my i have no remainder so 12 can go into 132 11 times all right 11 is my answer so now i have to multiply my answer to the numerator 11 times 11 is 11 times 8, sorry, is 88. Plus, what do I do next? The same thing. I divide and then I multiply the answer that I get to my numerator. 11 can go into 132 12 times. Okay, 12 times 8 is going to give us 96. So yes, maybe saying, Miss, but this sum is so long. All this working I have to do? Yes. If you get big numbers like this, yes. Sometimes you may get much smaller numbers, but I am deliberately working with bigger numbers. Okay? Now, what are we going to do? We are going to add 88 plus 96. It's going to give us 184. And I'm writing it here for lack of space. So I'm going to have 184 over 132 as my answer. Do we understand this? I simply add my numerators and put it over my denominator. Now, as I said before, when you are giving your answers, yes, another step. When you are giving your answers, you must give it in its reduced form. Okay, as we can see here, we have a an improper fraction. So how are we going to reduce this to a mixed number? We are going to divide our denominator into our numerator. That's what we can do to convert this improper fraction to a mixed number. But I'm not going to focus on that now. So I'm leaving my answers 184 over 132. Let's do another example. Please don't just look at this tutorial and not write. You must write maths as practice. Okay, because by the time I'm finished saying all of this, you're going to forget half the things I said. So it's best if you write it down and work it out as I am working it out. Next question. 6 over 9 plus 1 over 2. Another fraction to add. And what is the rule of thumb? I must have common denominators. Do I have common denominators? No, I don't. So I must find the LCM. What am I finding the LCM of? I'm finding the LCM of 2 and 9. Could 2 go into 9 without a remainder? No. Could 9 go into 2 without a remainder? No. So you cannot have 9 here. And you cannot have 2 here. Because whatever the lowest common multiple is, 9 must be able to go into it without a remainder as well as 2. Okay, let's use the hint that I gave you in the first question. All right, 9 cannot go into 2 and 2 cannot go into 9. So to get the LCM, I multiply my denominators 9 times 2. Okay, 9 twos are 18. So 18 is our common denominator. Let's say you didn't understand this step. What can you do? Go to your working column and work out your LCM. 
find the LCM of 2 and 9. 2 can go into 2 one time. Could 2 go into 9 without a remainder? No. So I bring it down. What's the next lowest common multiple? I'm going to use 3. Bring down my 1. Could 3 go into 9? Yes. 3 can go into 9 3 times. Next. Bring down my 1 again. I'm going to use 3 to go into 3. 3 into 3 is 1. And as long as I get 1s, this is what I want. To get the lowest common multiple, the LCM, I'm going to multiply the numbers that I used on the outside. So the LCM of 2 and 9 is going to be 2 times 3 times 3. So let's multiply. 2 3s are 6 and 6 3s are 18. Good. Are we getting the same thing? Yes. So whether you use this method or you go to your working column, you're getting the same LCM. If you want me to do two just to be sure, that's fine. So the LCM is 18. What do we do? We divide and then multiply our answer to the numerator. I'm going to say 9 into 18. How many times could 9 go into 18? 9 can go into 18 two times. If you don't know, go to your working column and write it down okay write it down not two but nine enter 18 okay you write it just like this like you're going to do long division nine into 18 and you work it out okay nine can go into 18 two times i'm going to multiply my answer to my numerator two sixes or six twos are 12 plus same thing on this side, I'm going to divide and then multiply my answer to my numerator. 2 can go into 18 9 times. Multiply 9 by my numerator. 9 ones are 9. Now that we are finished doing this, we simply add our numerators. Okay, our numerator is 12 and 9, which is 21. So we now have 21 over 18 and this is our answer now as you can see here this is also another improper fraction which can be reduced further but i am not going to focus on reducing fractions in this session okay let's go to our next question we have 6 over 10 take away 4 over 8 again what is the rule of thumb when adding or subtracting fractions, I must have common denominators. Okay, what is the lowest common multiple of 10 and 8? What number could 10 going to and 8 going to? Could 8 going to 10 without a remainder? Nope. Could 10 going to 8 without a remainder? Nope. So we multiply the two numbers. 10 times 8 is 80. So 80 is our LCM. If you don't like this method, Go to your working column and work it the way I showed you, right? 8 and 10 and use 2 can go into 8 how many times? 4, 2 can go into 10 5 times. Let's go again using 2, 2 can go into 4 2 times. Could 2 go into 5 without a remainder? No, so we bring down the 5. 2 into 2, 1, bring down the 5 again because 2 cannot go into 5. Now I'm going to use 5. Bring on the 1. 5 into 5 is 1. To get my LCM, I multiply the numbers on the outside. I have 2 twos are 4. 4 twos are 8. Right? And then I have 8 by 5 is going to give me 40. So as you can see here, 80 is also a common multiple of 10 and 8. But is 80 the lowest? no it is not okay so that's why it's always safer to check your answer because i just showed you you can use this technique with this question but i'm also showing you that that technique would not work for all the questions so the best thing to do is to double check go to your working column all right so the lowest common multiple of 10 and 8 is not 80 as we thought it is 40. okay so this is our safer method, okay? Double check your answers. All right, 10 can go into 40 how many times? What are we going to do? Divide and then multiply. 
10 can go into 40 4 times 4 times 6 is going to give us 24 then we're going to put our subtraction sign because we are subtracting then we're going to divide again and then multiply 8 can go into 40 how many times 5 times and 5 times 4 is 20 so what do we have here 24 take away 20 is 4 we have 4 over 40 this is our answer however as you can see this fraction is not improper it's proper but it still can be reduced okay I really don't want to focus on reducing but I'm going to reduce this one for you 4 can go into 4 1 and 4 can go into 40 10 times so the answer here will be 1 over 10 next question we have 6 over 9 plus 2 fifths what do we do before we add we must find the LCM common denominators all right could 9 go into 5 nope so 5 cannot be here note could 5 go into 9 nope so 9 cannot go into here okay 9 cannot be there so don't make that mistake all right so what can we do to get the answer find the LCM go to our working column all right and what can we do we can also multiply 9 by 5 to get our answer okay 9 by 5 is going to give us how much 45 so it's telling us that our LCM is going to be 45 now if you're not too sure what you can do go to your working column and write your numbers write your denominators 5 and 9 okay let's continue on top we can say 5 into 5 is 1 5 going to 9 without the remainder nope we're going to bring down our 9 what can we use we can use 3 bringing our 1 3 can go into 9 3 times we can use 3 again bringing our 1 3 can go into 3 1 time to get the LCM we multiply the numbers on the outside 5 trees are 15 and 15 by 3 is going to give us 45 so now that we have this and we have our confirmation we are going to divide as I said before and then multiply 9 can go into 45 5 times all right we're going to multiply 5 by our numerator 5 times 6 is going to give us 30 plus 5 can go into 45 9 times and 9 times 2 is 18 we are going to add our numerators we have 30 plus 18 and that's going to give us 48 over 45 this is our answer and of course this can be reduced further how it's an improper fraction all right so we can convert a mixed number by dividing our numer denominator into a numerator we'll say 45 into 45 1 45 and going to 48 how much times one time with a remainder of 3 over 45 you always want to give your answer in its reduced form all right in its lowest form okay now we're going to add and subtract mixed numbers with like denominators now there are two ways we can do this all right i'm going to show you the first method that we can use before we add or subtract mixed numbers we can convert these mixed numbers to improper fractions before we add or subtract them so let me show you how do we convert to an improper fraction is the first question we have to multiply and then add we have to multiply our whole number by our denominator and then add the answer to our numerator so 9 threes are 27 plus 1 is 28 over 3 subtract 2 threes are 6 plus 3 is 9 over 3 we have common denominators so all we do is subtract our numerators we have 28 subtract 9 and that's going to give us 
19 over 3. Okay, and this is our answer. Of course, it can be reduced further because we have an improper fraction. And how do we convert or reduce this improper fraction? 3 into 3, 1. And how much times could 3 go into 19? 3 can go into 19 6 times with a remainder of 1. Why? 6 trees are 18. Okay, with a remainder of 1 over 3. So our answer in its reduced form, in its lowest form, is 6 and a third. So this is one way we can convert to improper fractions and then add or subtract. We have 5 and a half minus 1 and a half. The other method that we can use is to work out our whole numbers first and then our fractions. Alright, so we have 5 take away 1 and that's going to give us 4. Now our fractions, as we can see, we have common denominators, all right? So we don't need to find the LCM, we just need to subtract the numerators. One take away one is zero. Zero over what? Two. Okay, so what is going to be our answer here? Four. Okay, four holes is going to be our answer, okay? nice we have 5 and 3 over 7 plus 5 and 6 over 7 again we have common denominators and we have the choice of converting to improper fractions first and then adding or working out our whole numbers first so let's work out our whole numbers first and see what we're getting 5 plus 5 is 10 we have common denominators for fractions so we are just going to add our numerators. 3 plus 6 is 9 over 7. And as we can see here, we have an improper fraction. So what can we do? We can reduce this fraction by saying 7 into 7, 1. How much times could 7 go into 9? 7 can go into 9, 1 with a remainder of 2 over 7. Okay, so this is the lowest, this can reduce. Now let's combine our answer. First, we had a whole number of 10. Now we have another whole number of 1. So we're going to add our whole numbers together. So we have 11 and 2 over 7. We have 9 and 11 over 50 plus 3 and 7 over 50. You have two methods. Okay, you can convert it to an improper fraction first and then add or work out your whole numbers first and then your fractions. So I'm going to work out my whole numbers first. 9 plus 3 is 12. Now I'm going to work out my fractions. What am I looking for? I'm looking to see if I have common denominators. Yes, I do. So all I need to do is add my numerators. 11 plus 7 is 18. Okay, so this is my answer. And of course, 18 over 50 could be reduced even further. What number can go into 18? And what number can go into 15? 2. 2 can go into 18, 9. And 2 can go into 50, 25 times. So this answer could be reduced even further to 12 and 9 over 25. Now we're going to add and subtract to mixed numbers with unlike denominators denominators that are not common all right so here we have 19 take away 19 that's going to give us zero and what do we have here we don't have common denominators so we need to find the lcm of 12 and 5 so quickly to our work in color we have 5 and 12 so we're going to use 5 first 5 can go into 5, 1 time, could 5 go into 12 without a remainder, no, writing back my 12, what can I use, 4, 2, 3, you have a choice, bring down my 1, 4 can go into 12, 3 times, I'm going to use 3, 3 can go into 3, 1 time, so to get my answer, I'm going to multiply the numbers that I got on the outside, 4 times 4 times 3 is going to give me 60. 
all right the same rule applies i am going to divide and then multiply 12 can go into 60 five times and five sevens are going to give us 35 we're going to write that here minus five and five can go into 60 how much times 12 times 12 by 1 is going to give us 12 so now that we found the LCM and we have common denominators all we need to do is subtract the numerators 35 subtract 12 is going to give us 23 over 60 this is a proper fraction can it be reduced any further nope there is no number that can go into 23 without a remainder and 60 without a remainder whatever number you use for the numerator you also have to use for the denominator so if you're dividing the top by three you also have to divide the bottom by three next we have 17 and 5 6 minus 1 and 3 over 5 again you have two ways you can do this you can convert the mixed numbers to improper fractions then find your LCM and subtract or you can work out your whole numbers and then the fractions I'm gonna work out my whole numbers 17 subtract 1 is going to give me 16 okay and what's the LCM of 6 and 5 could 6 go into 5? Nope. Could 5 go into 6 without a remainder? Nope. So we are going to multiply. Okay. 6 fives are 30. 30 is going to be my LCM. If you don't like this method, you're not sure of this, again, you can go to your working column and work out the LCM of 6 and 5. Now we're going to divide and multiply your answer. To the numerator 6 can go into 35 times 5 times 5 is 25 minus 5 can go into 36 times 6 trees are 18 all we need to do now is to subtract our numerators 25 subtract 18 is going to give us 7 so our whole numbers I'm writing it here we have 16 and 25 minus 18 is 7 over 30 and this is our answer Next we have 3 and a quarter Plus 3 and 5 eighths. What do we do? You have the option of working out your whole numbers first or Converting the mixed number to improper fractions Okay, I'm going to work on my whole numbers first 3 plus 3 is 6 I'm drawing my line here for my LCM. 3 plus 3 is 6. Now, what's the LCM of 4 and 8? Could 4 go into 8? Yes. So, 8 can be your LCM. 4 can go into 8 2 times. So, 2 ones are 2 plus 8 can go into 8 1 time. 1 by 5 is 5. We simply add our numerators. 2 plus 5 is 7. So it's 7, 6, and 7 over 8 is our answer. Okay? Next, we have 3 and 3 over 9 plus 7 and 6 over 11. Again, you have the choice of converting them to improper fractions before adding or work out your whole numbers and then your fractions. Okay, so for this one, I can see that my first number here, my numerator is smaller than my, my first numerator is smaller than my second numerator. So with that, I'm going to choose to convert these fractions to improper fractions first. All right, nine threes are 27 plus three. It's going to give us 30. I'm going to write 30 over nine. plus 11 sevens are 77 and 77 plus 6 is going to give us 83 over 11 now the next thing we need to do is to find the LCM what is the LCM of 9 and 11 I know it's big numbers but you can multiply you can go to your working column 
The LCM of 9 and 11 is 99. 9 can go into 99 11 times. I'm going to multiply my answer by my numerator. Now 11 times 30, of course, you can go to your working column. You're going to get 330 plus 11 into 99 is 9. And now you have to multiply 9 by 83 and you are going to get 747. Big numbers, I know. But you can go to your working column and write it down. 83 multiply by 9 because you know your 9 timetables okay now all we have to do is add our numerators so we have 747 and 330 that's going to give us a total of 1077 i'm not getting to write okay i am 1077 over 99 okay and as we know here it's an improper fraction so we can reduce so we have to ask ourselves how many times again we can call them could 99 going to 1077 okay we go to our working column and we divide at this age we're not allowed to use calculators okay so we go and we divide let's go 99 can go into one zero times 99 can go into 10 zero times 99 can go into 107 one time 99 by 1 is 99 let us subtract all right remember it's 107 we are dealing with okay could 7 take away 9 no i'm going to borrow draw my 9 here 1 17 take away 9 is going to give us 8 9 take away 9 is going to give us 0, 0. Bring down our 7. What do we have now? 87. Could 87, could 99 go into 87? No. So 99 by 0 is 0. We're going to subtract. 7 take away 0 is 7. 8 take away 0 is 8. So what do we have here? 99 can go into 1077 10 times with a remainder of 87 over 99. I know it's an extremely big number, but still, once you learn what you need to do, it doesn't matter how big the number is or how small the number is. You do what you learn. You follow the same pattern, okay? Thanks for watching.